Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we are going to be looking at analyzing stocks and specifically trying to determine the real value or what is commonly known as the intrinsic value of any stock. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So the method that we'll be focusing on is a type of investment methodology known as value investing. The fundamentals of value investing is that you should only buy a stock which you believe is trading under its real or intrinsic value. So for example, let's look at the price of Apple stock. The current market price, if we look online, is $162 if we want to buy one stock of Apple. Now this is the market price that we see here, and this doesn't necessarily mean that it's the fair price of Apple. And this is because companies that are publicly traded will have their share price influenced by external factors. Both speculation and demand for a stock can sometimes over and undervalue the market price, which will see it diverge from its true intrinsic value. Now, calculating the intrinsic value is no exact science. Warren Buffett, who's king when it comes to all things value investing, says the calculation of the intrinsic value is not so simple. As our definition suggests, intrinsic value is an estimate rather than a precise figure, and it is additionally an estimate that must be changed if interest rates move or forecasts of future cash flows are revised. Two people looking at the same set of facts will inevitably come up with at least slightly different intrinsic values. And the same will ring true for my calculation of the intrinsic value. When you try and find other videos on the same topic, you'll find that no two methods are the same. The method that I will be teaching in this video is what I learned whilst reading the book called Warren Buffett's Three Favourite Books, a guide to the intelligent investor, security analysis, and the wealth of nations. I honestly can't highly recommend this book enough. It does a great way of summarizing all three books together, but it also eases the reader into the essential fundamentals before migrating them into the more technical stuff. So it is really good for beginners as well as intermediates. Also, before we get into all the calculating stuff, please don't be relying on the intrinsic value to decide whether or not you should invest in a company. The intrinsic value is one factor to consider, but there are many other factors to consider as well. Do you spend time learning about the company? Is it long lasting? How do their management board behave and how they performed in the past? I do go into all of those aspects in part one of this video, which I'll link now. And finally, this is only going to be a good estimate for established businesses with a proven constant growth. If it's a startup or their performance history is a bit rocky, then we can't be confident with the numbers we're about to predict. Cool, now that's cleared up, let's jump straight into it. Now I have created a spreadsheet to help with the analysis and I've split it into two sections. One is the stock screen page where we look at a stock in more detail by reviewing some of the key financial metrics and also understanding what they mean. And then in the second part, we look at calculating the intrinsic value. It is suggested it is only worth calculating the intrinsic value if a company passes the stock screening test. This is a guideline. Obviously, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. I have tried my best to automate the spreadsheet, but unfortunately, there are some key details that can't be done automatically. So we will need to do a bit of research here and there. But don't worry, I will talk you through it in this video. So starting off on the stock screener page, as you can see where I've highlighted cells in orange, this is where we'll need to manually add information all the white cells are calculated automatically. So the first up on the list is something called the ticker, which is a unique identifier for a company. Now the company we will be looking at is Huntsman Corporation, which is a global manufacturer of chemical products. It is a mid cap business and has been around for 50 years. Now, if you are wondering why I picked this stock specifically, because it does seem a bit random and not some uh, well-known blue chip stock. And that is because when you go through a video like this, as I've seen on YouTube many times before, these blue chip companies do tend to be overvalued. And I wanted to demonstrate one that potentially isn't as overvalued as one might think. So this is why I went with Huntsman. Back to the spreadsheet. So we enter the ticket information for Huntsman and this is HUN. And as you can see, the company name appears automatically below. Item number three is the latest stock slash market price. You'll notice for the remaining terms, I've also added definitions as well as sentences to help you really understand what these numbers mean. So as you can see here, this field is the current market price for one share to buy Huntsman. Fairly straightforward, and that stands at $28.96. On to item number four, and this is the book value of a company, or what is known as the shareholder's equity. 
Now this is a number we're going to have to fetch, but it is essentially the value after you minus all the company's liabilities from their assets, which hopefully will be a positive number. If it's not, then that suggests they have more liabilities than they do assets, and that's never a good sign. To find this number, we go to Yahoo Finance. Uh, by the way, I will be putting all the links in the description box down below. Um, so yeah, we go to Yahoo Finance and then we look, search for Huntsman Corporation and then we go to Financials and then the balance sheet and then change it to quarterly. We will find the number that we need under stockholders equity and this is what we want to get. Also, whilst we stay on this page, as you can see, if you did do the maths ourselves, we can see that this number, the stockholders equity, is the difference between the total assets and the total liabilities. Copy this number and then paste it into the cell. One quick note is please do not change the denominator of this number. Yahoo Finance use numbers in thousands and I've kept it as the same principle in my sheet to allow for minimal effort. So there is no need to remove or add extra zeros. If you do do that, then some numbers won't be calculated correctly. So now we have the book value, great. But what does it mean? Well, if you read this sentence, it should hopefully cement the concept in layman terms. It says that Huntsman Corporation is worth 4.34 billion if it closed for business today and sold everything and paid all of its debts. Hopefully that has made things clear. If it doesn't, then think about an individual and when they pass away. Their book value will be their assets, such as money in the bank, pensions, any properties they have, minus any of their liabilities, mortgage, credit card debt, inheritance tax, etc, etc. The book value is what is left over. Moving on to the next item, and that is shares outstanding. This is the amount of company shares that are held by its shareholders. This field is automatically calculated, and we have a sentence for this too. And it is, Huntsman Corporation has a total of 0.21 billion in individual shares. This is the equivalent to 210 million individual shares. Item number six is the price to book value. Again, this is a really important number as it compares the market price of the company relative to the book value. And in this case, we get a price to book value of 1.4. Looking at it again in layman's terms, we see in this example that it says that for Huntsman, investors are willing to pay 1.4 times the book value to own one share of the company. The book recommends looking for a price to book value between 0.6 and 15. And in this case, Huntsman passes the test. And having reviewed a few book values, this is a really, really good number. Item number seven is earnings per share. And this is the company's net profit divided by the number of shares outstanding. And this indicates how much money a company makes for each share of stock. In this example, for every share of Huntsman I own, I can expect to receive $5.41 as an annual return. The guidance from the book is the higher the number, the better, which does make obvious sense. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean if you own a share, you would get the full $5.41. Some companies may decide to invest their earnings or use it to pay debts, so the full earnings won't necessarily land in your pocket. Moving on to item eight, and this is the price to earnings ratio, and this is the stock price divided by the earnings per share, which we calculated earlier. But what does this tell us? So we get a number of 5.36. Now this tells us that for every $5.36 we spend in Huntsman, I can expect to earn $1 a year later. Now, the lower the number, the better, and the guidance is that you should have a price to earnings ratio of less than 15, which again, Huntsman passes. Moving on to item number nine, and this is the current ratio, which measures the company's ability to pay their short term debt obligations. We will have to find this number online. So let's go back to Yahoo Finance and click on statistics. If we scroll down under the balance sheet header, we can see that we have a current ratio from the most recent quarter, and it is 1.88. So let's add that in to our spreadsheet. Now, a company with a ratio of one can pay off all of their liabilities with their assets. Their assets equal their liabilities, essentially. If they have less than one, then they have more short-term debt than assets, and vice versa if it is more than one. Huntsman has a ratio of 1.88, which means it can meet all of their short-term debt obligations and still have assets left over. Again, the guidance of this book is to have a ratio of more than one. Dividend yield is the next item, and this shows the percentage of how much the company will pay in dividends each year relative to the stock price. 
we have to again fetch this number from Yahoo Finance. So let's go back there. And if we scroll to dividends and splits and we go under forward annual dividend yield, we can see a number of 2.94%. Again, let's just add this into our spreadsheet. So what does this mean? This means that we can expect to get 2.94% of the stock price as dividends, and this will return us $0.85 per share. The guidance on this is if you are looking for dividend income, as some companies don't offer dividend, is to find those with a yield of at least 2.5%, and again, Huntsman would pass. And finally, we have the return on equity. Again, we will need to fetch this number, so let's go back to Yahoo Finance and scroll up to Management Effectiveness. We can see here that we have a return on equity value of 30.07%. So let's go ahead and copy that number into the spreadsheet. So this measures the effectiveness of Huntsman's to turn money invested in their company into profit. It's calculated by taking their net income and dividing it by their equity. I have put a notice here that a very high return on equity may sound great, but it can also indicate the accumulation of debt. So be sure to check out their balance sheet if you are suspicious. Huntsman achieves a 30.07 ROE, which is really healthy, and the guidance recommends looking for a ROE of 10% or more. The sentence for this is that this indicates that Huntsman can generate $30.07 for every $100 invested. Cool, so that is the first tab. Now the idea behind this is that only if a company passes all of these checks, it is then worth calculating their intrinsic value. And that is because it should mean that the intrinsic value calculator will be more accurate. Huntsman has passed all of these tests, so I think it's definitely worth looking at their intrinsic value. So let's move on to the next tab. So now we are on the intrinsic value calculator. Now I've broken down the calculations into steps so you can really see what we're doing here. So the first step is to look at the company's book value per share over the past 10 years. Now to find these numbers, we can go to stockroad.com, which is a really useful website whenever you need to look at historical data. Let's search for Huntsman. And if we scroll down, we can look at the book value per share line. Remember, think of book value as this is how much a company is worth today if it closed for business and sold everything and paid for all their debts. That is the number that we're taking here, but because we're doing it by share, we're also dividing this number by the number of shares outstanding just for easy comparison. So if we copy this line and paste it just above here, the spreadsheet will automatically transpose this data into a more readable format into this table. And we also calculate the growth rate per year. As you can see, Huntsman has an overall steady increase in their book value, but there does seem to be a few blip years, such as the period between 2014 and 16, where the book value actually decreased before shooting up again in the following years. Whenever you do see inconsistencies like these, it does put doubt in our prediction, because remember, the prediction does require a constant state of growth. Um, so whenever you do see something like this, it is definitely worth investigating into why this may have happened, because perhaps there is a reasonable explanation. I've also added in a graph so you can visually see the growth. And as you can see, overall, it does increase, but there are a few bumps along the way. The second step is to look at the average rate of growth. This is automatically calculated and it takes the average of all the growth rates from the above table. And as you can see here in this example, we get an average rate of growth of 13.71%. Step three is to see what analysts have also predicted. As the book value is dependent on earnings remaining constant or increasing, it is key to ensure that the predicted future earnings will also be the same. Let's see what other analysts have predicted just for reassurance. So to find out this number, we can go back to Yahoo Finance and go to analysis. And if we scroll down and we look at the growth rate estimates and the next five years per annum, we can see Huntsman has a predicted value of 11.61%, which is fairly close to our estimate. So we can take some reassurance in this. The next step, which is step four, is to calculate the future book value in 10 years time. What we need to do for this calculation is to get the present book value per share, which we've already taken from the table above, which is $19.99. The book value growth rate, which automatically takes our estimate, but feel free to change it to Yahoo's estimate or somewhere in between as you wish. And then the last piece of information is how many years in the future we want to go to. The default is 10 years, and this is typically accepted as a reasonable length of time to forecast for, so I wouldn't really change this number. 
So with all these inputs, we get a future book value per share of $72.23 in 10 years time, which would be the year 2031. And now the fifth and final step is to discount this future value based on the earnings rate you want to receive. And I would say 10% is a good expectation. So once we've done this, we get an intrinsic value calculated at $27.85, which is less than the market price, which would indicate that if you did want a 10% return, then the price of Huntsman is slightly overvalued. To cement this idea again, I have added a sentence below and it states, if you buy a share of Huntsman at $27.85, I can expect a 10% return. We can actually change this discounted rate to see what our return is likely to be at the market price. If I change the rate to 9.5%, our intrinsic value becomes $29.15, which is pretty much equaling the market price, but ever so slightly more. And this tells us that if we bought around the market price, so if we bought it today, we could expect a 9.5% return, which is quite a healthy result. So overall, I would say that the market price isn't overvalued and it would be worth looking into Huntsman to decide whether or not it is worth investing. So that was the analysis of Huntsman's Corporation's intrinsic value. Remember, this only warrants us as one phase when it comes to deciding whether we should invest with them or not. Please do spend time to look at other metrics, study the company, look at their history, and then base the decision once you have all of these pieces of information together. Again, revisit part one of this video if you want to learn more on what to consider. Of course, that is it for this week's episode. Let me know if you do have any questions down below. And if you have found this video really incredibly useful, I'd appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the growth of this channel. And remember, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.